Hello everyone, our topic this week was requested by Johannes W. We'll be going over Belagar from the Divinity series. Okay, so first up, Belagar is a reoccurring character in the Divinity series, appearing in Divinity 2, the Dragon Knight Saga, as well as Divinity Original Sin 1. He is a mage who is at best a neutral being within the confines of the game's stories. His name eventually becomes well known in Rivalon, the world of the Divinity games, and he is primarily known for three things. Magical power, an absurd and often twisted sense of practical joking, and rhymes. Just about every word you hear out of Belagar's mouth comes in a rhyme. Over time, some would say its charm is sublime, while others say we'd all be better off if he'd just become a mime. Regardless of your feelings on his prowess with poetry, however, he is undeniably skilled in magic, and some would argue that he might be the slightest bit mad. At worst, or something of a douche at best. As previously mentioned, Belagar is powerful. One made it here before by Belagar unchecked. Once I did detect in this champion's abode the feisty slayer rode in cold stone. I did cement her beauty, warmth, and scent. By his own words, he is the very greatest of mages around. And at least in the games where he makes an appearance, he may not be that far off. No matter where exactly he falls on the sliding scale of Most Powerful Wizard, there can be no doubt whatsoever that he is among the mightiest of Rivalon's mages. He's been shown to be able to create lifelike illusions, create life, summon great power in combat, has enough power that he can give the player an option B when up until that point it was assumed such a task was beyond anyone's power, and he has likely either figured out the secret of immortality or the very least vastly increased longevity. Chronologically speaking, he first appears in Divinity Original Sin 1, and during interactions with him, he speaks of meeting Maxos. Maxos is generally considered the greatest human wizard of all time. He was also already an old man during his appearance in Divinity Dragon Commander, which according to Larian's official timeline, took place in 8800 AR, nearly 9000 years before the events of Original Sin 1, where we meet him first, which begins in 4 AR. Belagar also appears in Divinity 2, the Dragon Knight Saga, which according to that same timeline takes place just over 1300 years later, in 1300 AD. So even assuming Maxos already had increased longevity, which seems likely for someone who even Belagar himself, with all of his ego, implies was actually more powerful than he was, and if we assume that Belagar and Maxos met, say, 4,000 or less years before Original Sin 1, about halfway through that nearly 9,000 year time gap, that still makes Belagar at minimum thousands of years old by his latest iteration of the timeline. With a possible age range, assuming he's somewhere between his 30s and 50s, roughly 1330 to 8800. Which is a big gap, but for a human, or really almost anyone in most fantasy settings, still a very long life. And as anyone who's ever so much as touched fantasy tropes knows, for mages, long life almost always means great power. The earliest record of Belagar's antics comes from Original Sin 1, when the player has a conversation with him after freeing the mage from a prison. A nebulously long time before the events of the game, Belagar's greatest ambition was to capture the attention of Maxos and impress the older mage with Belagar's own great skill and power. To that end, Belagar attempted to both summon and control four powerful elemental demons, presumably so that he could show up on Maxos's doorstep and preen like a peacock under the older mage's praise. Unfortunately for our rhyming wizard, his summoned targets proved entirely too much for him, and he was in danger of losing his life. With his last breath, he called out to Maxos himself for aid, and Maxos somehow both heard the call and intervened before Belagar could be slain. However, as punishment for Belagar's recklessness, Maxos locked Belagar away, capturing the very demons Belagar had summoned and turning them into the locks on the door to the newly minted prison. Only someone powerful and brave or stupid enough to defeat all four demons would be able to open the door and set Belagar free. So there, Belagar languished for, again, we don't know how long, almost definitely hundreds, possibly thousands of years. 
He was unable to break the seals on his prison, and so he spent his time viewing the world outside through magic and dreams, and when his boredom grew too great, he created a bevy of beauties he called the Belligarets, a trio of gorgeous women who were slavishly devoted to and adoring of Belligar, seeing being in his service as the very greatest achievement anyone could hope to reach in their lifetime. It is unknown exactly how intelligent the Belligarets are, and thus Brilgar's presumed powers of creation, but they can speak and have at least basic reasoning skills and personalities. They're also capable combatants, aiding Belagar in combat with magic, warrior skills, and archery if the player chooses to attack Belagar or any of the Belgarets. So great was his conceit that if the player is female, he'll even request that she become one of his Belagarets, and if she refuses, he's quite put out, despite the fact that she was the first hero capable of freeing him from X number of years in prison. Unsurprisingly, if the player says yes, nothing happens. Once freed, Belagar can be encountered a couple more times throughout the game, throwing challenges and puzzles the player's way. One is simple. You're given three barrels of loot, each of which contain an unidentified item, and you can choose only one, though it's possible to identify the items before removing them, because the game lets you do that. The other is more time-consuming, wherein you control a series of animals as they run through a maze in order to acquire a visually impressive hoard of treasure. He is next seen centuries later in the Dragon Knight Saga, and this time he spends much more time showing his dickish colors. The only thing he really does that's morally ambiguous in Original Sin is create beings to serve him and entertain him, and while that's a bit horrific, pretty much all of his other interactions come out at worst as just him jerking the player around for his amusement. Conversely, Belagar spends the first half of the Dragon Knight Saga as a neutral challenging agent, and the last half as an outright antagonist. In the first half, he can be encountered teleporting around as you wander the game on your various quests. He has shrines, whereat he summons monsters for you to fight, complete each one, and you are rewarded with a bigger fight and then some treasure. With Belagar rhyming and stroking his own ego the whole way, of course. Dig a little, and you'll also discover he's behind some horribly prankish events throughout the starting region, including trapping two souls within one body, creating a Jekyll and Hyde situation, teleporting people, player included, high enough into the air that the fall will kill them, and binding the soul of one poor bastard to a chicken. Creatures whose souls are bound together, among other things, both die if the other does so you can imagine why that'd be a problem for the human in question. The big event surrounding him, though, involves the Morals Cave. The player is locked in upon entry, and Belagar informs you that you're going to have to play Judge, Jury, and Executioner in order to get out. Belagar then further informs the player that the events you are about to witness and participate in are real, as are the people, though they are not actually taking place in the rooms of the cave. Whether this means that the actions in the cave are illusory, but his magics cause your choice to affect the real events, or that each door is some kind of portal teleporting you all across Rivalon to make your choices is unknown. Regardless of the methodology, if Belagar is to be believed, and such antics seem well within character for him, the player proceeds to make a series of important moral choices for real people, always involving the well-being of at least one of the parties in the rooms, before moving on. Examples include helping a robber steal from someone versus chasing said robber off, using a one-use key to free a chained-up duchess or loot her stash, and sending an untrained farmer off to war as is, and thus likely to his death, or sacking some of your own stat points to empower him so that he has better odds of living. Interestingly, the point of the Morals Cave isn't to choose good over evil, as would often be the case in such games, but rather it's a way for Belagar to see if the player will stick to their guns, whether said guns be good or evil. If the player chooses only good options, they receive no reward in any of the rooms, and will in fact sacrifice several stat points. Alternatively, if the player chooses only evil options, they'll receive a small reward in every room. Here's the catch, though. There's a final room that only has a reward and some words from Belagar. If the player chooses a mixture of good and evil options, you can receive a variety of rewards while avoiding the most stomach-turning choices. However, your reward at the end of the journey will simply be an empty chest. You didn't stick to your guns. Alternatively, if you went all good or all evil, the chest will contain a powerful weapon for the player, and Belagar will have rhyming words for you no matter what choices you make. Come the second half of the Dragon Knight storyline, Belagar acts as a full-on antagonist to the player. 
The twist being that this is probably the most reasonable set of decisions he makes during the entire game. By this point, the player has escaped a prison dimension with the help of an old, powerful, and admittedly evil mage named Berlin. Berlin was also willing to offer further aid to the player to help save the world on the condition that the player frees Berlin from his own imprisonment. Technically, the player is under no obligation to take the evil mage's offer of aid, especially since Berlin is up front with the fact that he is going to go straight back to his evil ways after completing his half of the deal. But Berlin is also the only known person with the power to help the player out with the problem at hand, or at least the only one the player can find before the big bad murders a huge and important group of people. Beligar gets wind of the player's attempt to free Berlin, and knowing stories of both Berlin's power and depravity, he decides to try his hand for once at stopping the player's seeming insanity. Rather than being that madman full of antics that the player has to deal with without getting frantic. Believing that Berhalin's release would be a horrible mistake, Beligar is encountered as a mini-boss several times throughout the last half of the game, with him trying to seal the player back in the prison dimension each time to keep Berhalin from being freed. Which eventually culminates in a final battle essentially on the doorstep of Berhalin's prison. Desperate after yet another defeat, Beligar offers the same power that Berhalin had been dangling, on the condition that Berhalin not be set free. For the record, he's not lying. Actually, neither of them are. Whether you choose to side with Beligar or Berhalin, you will be given what you need to save everyone. Ultimately, we personally consider freeing Berhalin against Beligar's wishes to be the better option, because while it may make the final boss fight harder as Berhalin joins the big bad guy against you, when you stand victorious, you do so over the broken corpse of both the big bad and Berhalin, meaning that the player has permanently removed a major source of evil from the world, rather than just leaving it locked up. And that's basically Beligar. And no, the greatest mage by far is the mighty Belagar! We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like and maybe show it to a friend you think might like it. If you have ideas for videos you'd like to see us do in the future, do like Johannes W and let us know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, be they lore, let's play, or other, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, this has been True, True Masters, Masters and, and Morons. Morons. Signing, signing off. off. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more like it, hit that subscribe orb. To see our last Let's Play, click or tap the link on the right. For our last lore video, click the link on the left. Thank you to all of our patrons for making these videos possible. Thanks, Thanks for watching, watching and, and we'll, we'll see, see you next time. time.